All right, check, check. Let's see, are we live? All right. All right, testing, testing, one, two, three. Looks like we are live. All right. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the uh, walkthrough video for Soldier's Joy. All right. If that's what you're here for, you are in the right place. I'm just checking the technical features to make sure everything is good. Looks like we're good to go. So if you are watching this on YouTube, um, uh, there's a comment box there if you want to ask any questions as I move through this. Uh, feel free to do so, and if you are watching this on the Clawhammer Banjo site, uh, feel free to ask questions in the comment box under the video there as well. Um, I think you will need to be signed into YouTube in order to do that. All right, so let's see. So I'm actually going to be uh, walking through two different versions of Soldier's Joy today. The first one I'm going to do is... Uh, is going to be the one that's posted uh, on YouTube that was the, as part of the Tune of the Week series, um, and uh, it's uh, and so that's that's a Brain Joe level three three to four, um, and then there's also I'll also do the, the uh, Brain Joe level a uh, Brain Joe level two version. It's a slightly simplified version of that one um, that is uh, available in the vault um, in the Breakthrough Banjo course, but it'll be displayed on the screen as well uh, during this tutorial. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm uh, Josh Turknet. I am the uh, founder of BrainJo, and this uh, video is part of a new series um, in the uh, BrainJo course, the uh, virtual classroom. And um, so uh, you'll note if you are on uh, if you are on YouTube, there's uh, in the video description be below the video, there's several different links. There's a link to download the tab that I'm going to go through here. If you don't already have it, um, this uh, there's also a link to the upcoming schedule of workshops, which you also see the link at the bottom of the a page. Um, and there's some other links in there. Uh, there's a link to the original video uh, where I play this tune through. Um, there's also a link to the uh, uh, an article about the system that I recommend using when you are learning uh, tunes from Tab, especially if you are part of the Breakthrough Banjo course, because um, our ultimate ob objective there is for, to get you to where you can uh, play these things uh, entirely by ear. So uh, ways to learn from Tab so that you don't obstruct, obstruct that process. And uh, also, if you uh, uh, want to make sure that you are alerted when, uh, when these uh, videos are airing, uh, subscribe to the um, channel, to the Clawhammer Banjo channel, and, uh, and turn on your notifications in that way. Uh, you'll be notified when they come. All right, so with that, well, let's get started on Soldier's Joy. So, Soldier's Joy uh, is, has been one of the most popular... Uh, videos on the channel. It is um, one of the most all-time popular Call Him or Banjo tunes. It's probably one that a lot of people start with or one that brings people into wanting to play Call Him or Banjo. Um, it was certainly one of those tunes for me, so it's sort of like the uh, Call Him or Banjo version of uh, Stairway to Heaven. Um, but it's a great song, uh, one that everybody, every Call Hammerist, uh, should, every banjo player should know. Um, so, we will be um, learning that today. So let's get started by uh, making sure we're all in the right tuning. So this is a, um, a D tune, which uh, <clears throat> on the banjo and climber banjo, we oftentimes play in what's known as double D tuning, and that's what we're in here. So uh, if you hopefully are familiar with that, if not, uh, you may be familiar with double C tuning, uh, which is just... Uh, which is the same tuning, um, just down two frets. So what most people would typically do to get into double D tuning 
is to tune the banjo to double C and then move the capo up two frets and kind of uh, retune there. So I have my capo here on the second fret, um, which is wh what which is where I would typically have it when I'm tuning to uh, double D. And I have a railroad spike on the seventh fret for my fifth string to bring that up to pitch. So now you don't have to use a capo uh, here. You can tune uh, a modern banjo directly up to these pitches if you want to. Um, it's faster uh, to use the capo and a little bit easier, and it's easier to go back and forth between different tunings that way. So to review what our strings should be, uh, we have a, um, a D on our fourth string. We have an A on the third. We have a D on the second. We have an E on the first. And we have an A on the fifth string. Like I said, these, these um, strings, the relationship between the strings the notes is the same as in double C. So you could play this tab exactly as it is here in double C tuning and it will sound fine. It would be the same song, it'll just be in the key of C instead of in the key of D. And the reason, the main reason why we consider this a D tune is because if you're playing with a fiddle player, uh, that's where they're gonna wanna play it. They're not gonna wanna play it uh, in the key of C, which would, which would require for them completely relearning the tune a different, uh, different way. Um, somebody asked about having one spike. Yes, on this banjo, I only have uh, one spike. All right. Um, and that's because that pretty much allows, allows everything I would want to do uh, in terms of spiking the fifth string. Um, all right, so let's get started. So the um, if you see uh, on the tab of... Uh, at the top of the screen, there's a little blue square. We'll use that to kind of keep track of uh, where we are in the tablature. So I'll try to move that uh, to each subsequent measure as we're working on them. So we're starting with the very first measure, um, which, uh, so we're starting with an open, a strike on the open third string. And then uh, if you notice the next string after, the, the next note after that is the first, I mean the, the um, fourth string at the fourth fret. And you'll note there, there is a number four with a circle uh, underneath it. So that's an indication of what uh, of uh, that that's that note is to be generated with the a finger of your fretting hand with uh, in this case a hammer on. Okay, so I'm striking the open third string and then I'm hammering on to the fourth string, uh, fourth fret. And here I'm doing it with my ring finger. You could use pinky ring. Uh, you could use you could really use any finger, but uh, you want to keep yourself in good in sort of a stable position there. So, so you're gonna hammer on. So open third, and then a hammer on to the fourth string, fourth fret, and then you're keeping your finger in place there. Just brush, and then follow with a thumb on the fifth. And then we're gonna then release our finger from that fret. We're gonna hammer on from the open fourth, again to the fourth string, fourth fret. And then another strum thumb. That's that whole measure. Okay. Then we'll move to our next measure. We are going to hammer on from the open uh, second string to the second, I mean, open third string, to the open to the uh, third string second fret, and you'll notice there. I'm also I'm doing that with my middle finger, and at the same time I'm actually bringing my ring finger down so that I get that second fret of the first string, um, because I'm about to strum that note, and we're on a D major chord here. Uh, that's the chord that's kind of uh, that's the, being played at the moment uh, in this in this particular tune, and that chord is played by simply fretting that first string at the second fret. So, in order to make my strum consistent with the sound of that chord, I'm going to bring my my finger there too, so that when I strum it, it sounds good. 
and then I'm going to strum thumb after that hammer on. Now, you could leave that note open. It doesn't sound terrible. It sounds a slightly dissonant, uh, but that's kind of okay in this music, especially when it's going fast. But if you want to get a little sweeter sound, bring that, that finger down, and then you'll definitely want to bring it down, for, or you prefer to bring it down for the next uh, strum you're going to have. So after that half, first half measure, then the next note is the open second string, followed by a strum thumb. So that whole me second measure is, again, and then we'll move to the third measure. Once again, same thing, we have this, um, this uh, hammer on from the, uh, we're striking the open third string and then after that hammering on to the fourth fret of the fourth string. So, so same thing we did to open the tune. And the, what that's doing there is this, this note here, fourth string, fourth fret, that's the second melody note. So we, if we, what we're doing is bringing it by hammering onto it on that off beat, we're syncopating it. Instead of being on the beat, we're going, so we're, we're bringing it in a little bit early to syncopate. And um, it's just a nice, hammer-ons and pull-offs are a nice, easy way to syncopate our melody. So, so that second half of that measure is exactly like the first measure. We're going to hammer on from the open fourth string to the fourth string fourth fret and follow it with a strum thumb. So again that third measure is exactly the same as the first measure. And now the fourth measure is different. Um, so the the song itself is switching chords here to the to what in this key would be the A major if you're in double C would be G major which you can form with the uh, fourth string second fret and the, and the second string second fret and so just placing your fingers over in that shape uh, you just play the fourth string followed by a strum thumb and the fourth string again followed by a strum thumb so again all right so now the entire uh, first uh, those, those four measures sound like this I'll do a quick check for questions. All right. Hello, Otto. It's a good name. It's a good old time name. All right. So let's uh, move to the next set of measures. Okay. Uh, this should look familiar. <laughs> it's the same thing again, right? So this same measure. We've done it two times already, so I won't belabor it. And if you note, the next measure is the same exact one as our second measure. Actually, with one slight difference. So it starts the same, where we're hammering on to that third string at the second fret, following it with a strum thumb, with our finger on that second fret of the first string as well. And then playing the open second, followed by a strum thumb. So those two measures. And now we're going to close out this first pass through the A part. So um, a lot of these fiddle tunes are broken up into segments of eight measures. So um, we're, on, we're on to our measure six. Let me, let me measure seven now. Let me move my blue square. Um, so now we're going to close it out with these two measures. We're going to start uh, with a pull-off from the 1st string 2nd fret. I've got my index finger on it there. 1st string 2nd fret to the open 1st. And then the open 2nd followed by a thumb on the 5th. So those first four notes. 
Now we've got the open first, followed by a drop thumb on the open second. And then a pull off from the third string, fourth fret to the open third. So that whole measure. One more time. And now we close out this first pass through the A part. Let me uh, move my dot. Two, we're gonna play the open second, followed by a brush thumb with again our finger fretting that uh, first string at the second fret because again, we're on a D major chord. And then we're gonna play that open second again. All right, and now we're going to um, uh, go we're gonna go through that entire a part again. So this is uh, this tune the structure of this tune is is uh, two two a parts two B parts So I have the B. I mean I have this second time through the a part Tabbed out a little bit differently. So we'll go through that. So um, you could uh, You know you go there's a at the end of this phrase the la very uh, last two notes are essentially a pickup measure We have the a hammer on from the open third to the open second so you could go back to where we started and play that entire uh, thing over again. Um, but this pass through, we'll play it slightly differently. Check for any questions. <laughs> Somebody, uh, huh, thank you. Um, somebody asks about uh, the, um, this banjo. So this is this is a this is my brain. This is the banjo model. There is a link to to the to more information about them in the video description. And this is actually a Hobart setup. Um, all right. So let's go back uh, to the next. All right. So again, we're on our second pass now through the A part, and I just have this played a little bit differently. Um, we have a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs, as you can see. So it begins the same way with this hammer on from the third, uh, open third, and then we're hammering on to the fourth string, fourth fret. And then now, instead of what we were doing before with that um, strum, we're just gonna do a pull off from that fourth string, fourth fret to the open fo fourth. And you'll note there that after, uh, that at the same time, you can strike the fifth string like this. So that sort of thing uh, looks more complicated than it is um, to, to uncomplicate it in your mind. Because uh, I, I know because I get asked about these things every, every once in a while. Uh, imagine there's no pull off there. And you're just playing the fourth string, fourth fret, followed by the fifth string. Like that. Now you're, do you're doing nothing different with your right hand if you pull off, all you're doing is just pulling off to the, off that note after you strike it. Sorry. And hitting the fifth string. So this is something with that, in that situation, you could decide whether or not to strike that fifth or not. And it really will kind of happen organically is just part of the pulse of your right hand. So don't let that trip you up too much. It, it, like I said, it looks complicated, but it really isn't if you break it down into the, in its two components. Um, so now let's go to the second half of that measure. We're gonna uh, um, we're gonna hammer on from the open fourth to the fourth string fourth fret, and then do another pull off. So that whole measure, and again you can decide whether or not you want to include that fifth string there. But that's how it sounds, and then. Moving to the next measure. Again, we have another little series, a little hammer off, hammer on pull off, this time on the third string. So going from the open third to the third string second fret, hammer on, and then same thing, pull off. And again, if you want to strike that fifth string after, as, you're ham as you're pulling off, that's fine. And again, to uncomplicate it, just think about there being no pull off there and you would just be playing that, but instead doing that. 
And then the next note is the open second. And then followed by another hammer on from the open third to the third string second fret. Okay. Um, and then we have something very similar again for our next measure. Move my blue square. Again, the same hammer on we've been doing multiple times. That pull off again from the fourth string uh, to the open, I mean from the fourth fret to the open fret. Then a hammer on again. And then instead of pulling off again, just applying that note, you could strum it, uh, you could play it single, and then just following it with a thumb on the fifth. So that whole measure. And now, again, remember this part of the song, it switches to that A major chord, so finger that chord, play that fourth string, followed by a strum thumb, fourth string again. Now a little pick up again, the open third to the open sec to the third string second fret. Okay, so these whole this whole set of measures. Like that. All right, move up to the next set. Check real quick for questions. Somebody asks about, uh, oh, a couple questions here I'll get to. So, what gauge of strings? I like light gauge strings. I use the Diodario uh, light gauge set with, uh, typically try to find the one with the phosphor bronze fourth string, but I like, I prefer light gauges. Um, and then uh, strumming only two strings. I would say, so I, I've, um, the, the, as far as how many str uh, strings you want to strum, it's really personal preference. Um, you have, you can't, you have to delineate in a tab a certain number of strings to, to, to designate a strum. Um, so it could be two, three, or four. Uh, I don't get too hung up on that. Just uh, strum whatever sounds best to you. Um, most of the time, I, I will uh, designate a strum as three strings, but it's kind of arbitrary. All right. Now, again, we're closing out uh, this A. These are the last four measures of the A part, doing it a little bit differently. Um, oops, sorry, I jumped ahead in the tab here. Okay, there. All right, so this next uh, set of uh, measures looks again very familiar, just like we um, did earlier. We have this series of uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Next measure is the same as before. Again. And now, closing out the, this uh, second pass through the A part, again we have a, a pull off from the first string second fret to the open first string, followed by the open second and a thumb on the fifth. And then this same descending uh, run with the open first to the open second uh, as a drop thumb designated by the T that you see under the tab there. And then this pull off from the third string, fourth fret to the open third. So that whole measure. And then we're closing out this final run through the A part with an open second, followed by a strum thumb while we're fingering that uh, a, uh, D major chord. And then the open fourth kind of a definitive finish with that low open uh, fourth string. And now we're going to move to the B part. All right, now we're at the B part. So this, this uh, B part opens with uh, the uh, uh, pull off again from that first string second fret to the open uh, first string. 
placing our finger back on that second fret for the next note, followed by a thumb on the fifth. Placing pinky down to the first string fifth fret, followed by a drop thumb to the open second. Releasing the pinky back to that second fret of the first string and a thumb on the fifth. So, that full measure. Moving to the next one. Release that finger, play the uh, open first, followed by the second, the open second with a drop thumb. Placing that finger back on the second fret, play that followed by a thumb on the fifth. So those first four notes. Now the chord progression here moves to this, uh, what is a G major in this key. Uh, if you're in double C, it would be an F major. That's how you think of this particular shape. Uh, third string, second fret. Uh, first string, third fret. And playing that first string while we're fingering that chord, followed by a brush thumb. So that whole measure. Now this next measure is very similar to the first one we, we played it here with a slight change. So again, starting with this pull off on the second fret of the first string. Finger back in place and play that note with the followed by a thumb on the fifth. And then here, you'll note there there's a there's a parentheses around that uh, that note there. So whereas we sounded that note the first time through, what I like to do here is play that as a skip stroke, and that's what the parentheses indicates there. So I move my finger like I'm going to hit it, but I don't actually hit it. So the next note you're going to hear is that drop thumb to the open second. Once again. And what that does is it effectively syncopates that fifth uh, fret note on the first string because I've played the, the fifth string prior to it, which is the same pitch, the same note. So we've turned what was a drone now into a syncopated melody note, essentially. Okay? And now, and, but if you were, so the reason there's a five there in parentheses is if you didn't want to skip that uh, note, you just play, play that same, play it the same way we did before. And then we close it out by playing the first string second fret followed by a thumb on the fifth. So again, a nice for me, I think it's a nice easy way to create some variation and interest uh, without doing anything extra with your fretting hand. All right, and now we're going to close uh, this first little four measures out with this same descending run from the open first to the open second uh, with the drop thumb. Then the third string fourth fret followed by a thumb on the fifth. So, and then the open third followed by a strum thumb, again, fingering that D major chord. So this whole set of measures. All right, let me pause for questions. Oh, sorry, I forgot to move my blue dot. Um, but yeah, we are, we are here now. All right, let me check, make sure. Let's see. So, second measure of the B part. I'm looking at questions here. There's, oh, it, uh, there's a small, somebody asked about this small circle on the tab. Um, this, I think, whoops. <laughs> this thing, you can ignore that. Those little things just are, are markers on this software for where uh, a chord change or a chord uh, designation is. So you can ignore those little marks. They don't have significance for how to play it. Um, where's your thumb on? Where's my thumb on beat? So as far as where my thumb is, um, my thumb is always coming to rest on the fifth string if it's not, if I'm not sounding it. So um, there's a, in the eight steps to claw hammer 
course, which there should be a link to in the description, there's a there's a um, lesson on this called the thumb rest, um, and and so that's it's I think it's really a very um, important part of claw hammer technique to make sure every time you're bringing your hand down to strike a string or strum or whatever that you're bringing that thumb against the fifth string so that you can either decide then to sound it or not but that it's consistent from one stroke stroke to the next so that's not an extra thing to have to manage or think about um, all right and Scotty asked about singing um, so I would usually typically learn the tune first uh, this and and uh, uh, enough, now if it has words, I'll be thinking about the, those words and the and the melody. But I'll typically learn to play it first, and then I'll and then I'll go to uh, singing, um, figuring out something that I, that I would like to play while I sing. All right, let's move to the next set of measures. Whoops, too far. There we go. All right, so now we're still on the B part, kind of the second half of the B part. Uh, same exact phrase that we did before. Uh, in fact, I believe these first two are exactly the same. It's one of the nice things about these old time tunes, these fiddle tunes, is there's a lot of recycled material um, that you just kind of mix and match. So again, this, this measure sounds like this. And then as before, the next measure, Again, uh, that, that drop thumb from the, uh, we got play the open first, followed by a thumb on the second. Then fingering that second fret of the first string, and then moving to that, uh, what is our G major chord there, playing the first string, followed by a strum thumb. Now we're kind of closing out this first pass through the B part. So we're, I have two uh, two pull-offs there from the second fret of the first string, uh, right in a row. Okay. Now you'll note there's a there's another skip stroke there, so there's an uh, another parenthesis there. So what I'm doing again is skipping over that note, and the next note I play is the thumb on that uh, open second. So. Now there, I just played the fifth string like I was talking about before. You can include the fifth string if you'd like after that second pull off. And again, just uh, don't let it trip you up. If you if to uncomplicate it, you just imagine there being no pull off there and doing it this way. And then just adding the pull off. Okay. So that uh, so with the drop thumb, it sounds like this. Again, just allowing us to syncopation there. We close out this measure by the fourth fret of the third string, followed by the a thumb on the fifth. So that whole measure, and then very easy close to this first pass of the B part, fingering that chord again, that D major chord, playing the open second, followed by a strum thumb twice in a row. So these whole four measures are, sound like this. All right. Let me check your questions. Okay. Go on to the next. So again, if you wanted to, you could repeat that same exact B part. So that's one pass through the B part that we just did. Um, uh, but I have it again slightly differently, I think, <laughs> the second time through. So we'll cover that. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Um, so I'll cover that here. So this is our second run now through the B part. So we start again, that pull off from the uh, second fret of the first string, back to the fretted sec first string, and a thumb on the fifth. Moving the pinky down to the fifth fret of the first string, followed by a strum thumb. So here's that whole measure. 
this this measures the same playing this uh starting with this open first and the drop thumb to the second moving to our uh, chord shape there the g major chord for and then moving to the third measure up here we're going to play the same little pull off figure on the first string back again do the fifth fret of the first string release that pinky again keeping the finger fretted on the second string play that followed by a thumb on the fifth so that measure and now the final measure here is familiar we did this before this descending run open first open second with a drop thumb third string fourth fret followed by a thumb on the fifth and then the open third so these four measures Last time through, we're going to close it out. So here, instead of a pull-off, we're actually going to hammer on to the uh, uh, second fret of the first string from the open string. Let me move my marker. This measure here. Follow that, keeping our finger in place. Just play that first string again, followed by a thumb on the fifth. Bring that uh, pinky down to the 5th fret of the 1st string, followed by the open 2nd with a drop thumb. Release the pinky, play the 2nd fret again of the 1st string, followed by a thumb on the 5th. So, And then this next measure, exactly as we've played more than once before. This next measure is the one we did before that's got this uh, little syncopation with that skip note. Okay, now this is that closes out the second pass through the B part. So if you're going to continue on this song, you, you would continue this measure. And what you could do is, would be something like that. Or you could go. play that uh, pickup from the open third to the second fret to prepare us for going back to the beginning of the A part. So if we wanted to change that last, if we wanted to, if we're going back to the beginning of the A in that last measure, we do that and get us back to that A part. But if we're just going to end it there, that's our last note and we just hold that note for the entire measure. Okay, so that is the, uh, that is Soldier's Joy, uh, this particular version of it. And um, the P or H show. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Banjo Pete, I'm, uh, the, um, the, hopefully you can see whether it's a hammer on or pull off, um, or uh, with my narration um, telling you whether it's a hammer on or a pull off. Just trying to make sure there's room for everything on the screen. So let me switch now. I'm going to uh, walk through the uh, level two version of this. So this is, uh, again, this version is, uh, is in, there are level two versions of a lot of the um, songs in the vault for those of you who are members of the Breakthrough Banjo course. And I'm going to walk through this one um, so you can kind of see the differences. Let me adjust this real quick. Whoops. Okay, let's see how that works. one more adjustment so I can see everything okay all right so this is the level two version um, and one of the differences between the level two and the higher versions is that you won't find any drop thumbs here so 
if you're not familiar with those, or if you haven't quite gotten those down yet, you can still uh, play this song uh, with this particular arrangement, which is um, great too. And, and, and uh, I talk about this a, a lot, but you really don't have to play things too complicated for them to sound great. Um, play things set, solid with good timing, and that's the key. Is if you have a great tune, a great tune is always going to sound good. Um, all right. So this is the level two version. Um, chat for questions. All right. Oh, if you uh, if you if you do enjoy these tab walkthrough videos, you want me to do more of them. Um, let me know. It, just hit a hit the um, thumbs up icon on YouTube uh, to let me know that you enjoy these. Um, so far, the feedback has been good. So. I plan to keep keep continuing with these. All right, so this is the first, we'll go through the first measure in this level two version. Again, this look, should look familiar, the same hammer-on figure um, from the open third to the, to the fourth string, fourth fret. And then hammering on from the open fourth to the fourth string, fourth fret. So that measure. Okay. Pretty uh, straightforward there, and again, and now we're starting the second measure, same way, hammering on the open third to the second uh, fret of the third string. And again, uh, because this was a level two, this why you'll note that that uh, first string is just open. I didn't have you hammer or uh, making that full chord right away, but since we've done that the other, the other version. If you want to do that, that is perfectly fine. Either way. The second way just gives a little bit of distance, but it's not necessarily bad. Um, and then the second part, part of that measure, you have the open second, and then a strum thumb while you are fingering that note to make that chord. So that first string at the second fret, so you're forming that D major chord. So that measure. And then we'll move to the next measure, which is exactly the same as the first. And then we are changing chords there again, just like we did in the other version. So for, uh, we'll have our fingers on the second fret of the fourth string and the second fret of the second string. I use middle on the fourth, ring on the second. And just playing that fourth string followed by a strum thumb twice in a row. So this whole four measures. Okay. Pause here real, real quick for any questions. Well, good, thank you. <laughs> thank you, you guys responded with the, for the thumbs up request. That's a good, that's good to see. I appreciate that. All right. So let's, uh, move on to this next set of measures. Um, so again, uh, this looks familiar. This is the third time we've done it. Same thing again. And same as before on the second measure here. So that's no different. That's, uh, that's our same first two measures, just repeat it again. Now, we do have something different to close out this pass through the A part. I'm gonna pull off from the uh, first, second fret of the first string to the open string. Do the, play the open second followed by a thumb on the fifth. And if you recall, in the other version, we played, this, we played a descending run with a drop thumb. Here, we're gonna replicate that sound pretty uh, essentially, but instead, we're gonna do it by a, with a hammer on to, from the, to the um, fourth fret of the third string after striking the open first. And um, I would recommend placing the index on the second fret of the second string at the same time so that your next strum sound is, uh, is in tune with the chord of the moment. So that whole, those four notes. 
Now, if you didn't, if you didn't place your finger on that second fret, it would sound like this. Again, it's a little bit dissonant, not terrible though. So that whole phrase, that whole measure. And so that's another, uh, you know, just nice way to get a nice syncopated note with your fretting hand uh, without a lot of extra effort. And then we close this uh, pass through the A part with uh, two, with just a uh, open second followed by a strum thumb with our finger on the uh, second fret of the first string to form that D major chord. We just do that twice. So this whole set of measures at the top sounds like. Okay. Now I think I do have a little variation here for this. Um, actually, no, I don't have a variation. So this would. So the here, like I said before, um, you would just go, if that was your first run through the A part, you just play that same thing again um, to keep things simple. All right, so now we'll do a pass through the B part. Whoops, I've got a X there where it shouldn't be. Change that. There, okay. Okay, good. All right. So now we will do this. Uh, uh, we'll start this B part, okay, with a, the, like we did in the other version, a pull off from the second fret of the first string to the open second. Place that finger back on the second fret and then do a strum thumb. Place the pinky on the fifth fret, followed by a strum thumb. So that all together sounds like. Next measure, we're going to hammer on uh, from the open first to the first string second fret, followed by a strum thumb with our finger in place. Then we're going to switch to that uh, G major chord, that shape there, and then while our fingers are on that chord, play, play the first, open first, not the open first, the first string with it fretted, followed by a strum thumb. So that measure. Right, move to the next measure, which is the exact same as the first one that we played here. And this fourth measure up top should look, this beginning of it should look familiar. We're again doing that same ham, alternate string hammer on after we onto the fourth fret of the third string after striking the open first. And then bringing our, our index finger onto the second fret of the, of the second string. So. Uh, I have uh, ring on the fourth fret of the third, index on the second fret of the second. So I'm bringing those both down when I do that hammer on so that my hands are, my fingers are ready in position for that strum. Then we release that, uh, and I'm actually uh, moving to that A major shape there, playing the open third and then a strum thumb. So that whole measure. So the entire uh, four measures up top sound like this. Okay. Move to the next set. All right, and this essentially replicates what we've already done. So we've got uh, recycle, recycled content again. All right, so this begins with, oops, um, same thing we did before, that starting with this pull off from the first string to the open, from the second fret of the first string to the open first. Finger back in place, strum thumb. Pinky on the fifth, play that note, followed by a strum thumb with that pinky still in faith place. And then like we did before, hammer on from the open first 
to this first string second fret followed by a th uh, strum thumb. Moving to the G major chord, playing that first string followed by a strum thumb. And then going again to that uh, pull off on the first string from the second fret to the open. Finger back in position for a strum thumb. And here, you can play that as a skip stroke. That might be a little tricky if you're uh, if you're just with level two version. So let me, I'm gonna change that back. Like I said, you could tr you could play that with a skip stroke, but um, I don't want that to to throw you off too much. So. We'll do exactly as we did before. So that's that's a, a full pass through a full B part. So, and again, if you are going to go back to the to play a second B part, you could just play that um, fill fill out that last measure there, and then go back to the beginning. gonna go if you were play if you played two times through the B part just go uh, um, you could go you could do close out again like we did before uh, the last two notes being those little pickup notes uh, for with the hammer on from the open third to the third string second fret to then go back to your A part or you don't have to do that pickup you could just do this and just go straight to playing it without those pickup notes so either option um, and then of course if you're just if you're done with the tune then you that last measure is just is just gonna be that uh, open second string which is your D note which is the root note of the key which closes it out all right I'll do a final check for um, samples ghost note. Kevin asked about uh, ghost notes um, uh, you know, I think people use different uh, call have different things in mind for what ghost notes are. Um, some people will call a, like a a, a, um, a skip note um, a ghost note, so something that's like that's there but not sounded. Um, and I think that's the the software that that I use refers to those notes as ghost notes. Um, so that that wouldn't be inappropriate. And again, when you see those notes in parentheses, that indicates that. If you if you were not playing it as a uh, as a skip, that you could just sound that particular note. All right, so I think um, hopefully I've hit all the questions. Um, this song, um, real quick, if for those of you who are wanting to play and sing, um, again I've covered this. In other episodes in the workshop and in the course, but uh, if you were to um, th just to get started with it, what I would uh, recommend doing is just playing, um, just fingering the chord positions as you go, and and using kind of an alternating bum ditty pattern uh, with your right hand. So something very simple. Grass up, pattern kind of on these uh, strings and um, as you get f comfortable with that then you can start messing around with playing some of the melody on notes that you're singing at the same time as kind of the next level to go to but um, this is a good one for getting started playing and singing because um, it sounds it sounds good with not doing a whole lot uh, with your uh, right hand okay uh, let's save to make sure 
<laughs> yes, Kevin, your confusion is common. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's, it, it infects me as well. Um, okay, so thank you for watching. Again, if you want to... Uh, if you want to make sure you get these ones that I'm airing live on YouTube uh, publicly, uh, then uh, subscribe to the channel. And um, and then again, all the replays are available as part of the uh, Breakthrough Banjo course. All right, so uh, I will see you guys again soon for the next installment and enjoy the rest of your day.